What does this sign say? And what does Arms Factory have in common with ancient Roman mythology? Stick around and find out. One of the most important things we do in Identity 5 is navigate the maps, trying to avoid and run away and dodge hunters, trying to make sure that they don't hit us. Some higher tier players also have names for different parts of the map so that they can call them out in voice chat and make sure that they know where everybody is at each moment. Most of us know these maps quite well by now, but there are a couple of things that the developers have added to the maps that most of us don't pay attention to because we're too busy trying to kite away from hunters. So let's get into a few things that I've found around the maps that you might not know about. Let's start with one of the most popular maps, Red Church. Did you know that there's a strange symbol above the door in the shack behind the church? It seems to be like a four-leaf clover with like a Wi-Fi symbol combined with it and I don't really know what it is. If you guys know what it is, please write it down below in the comments because I really couldn't think of what it could be. Strangely, this only appears above one of the doors. Once you're inside the church itself, you'll also realize that there are some windows that are broken and there are some windows that aren't broken and they have glass. Now, from a distance, this glass looks opaque, that is, you can't see through them. But on closer inspection, you'll find out that they are actually transparent. You can see through them and you can actually see different parts of the map through the glass. This could be useful if you want to keep an eye on survivors or maybe spot survivors moving around the maps without them knowing that you're actually watching them. I'm not sure really how practical this is, but you never know, maybe you can use it to your advantage sometime. There are two notable pieces of text in Red Church. One of them being in the graveyard. Now if you walk around the graveyard, you'll notice that there's a little sheet of paper or maybe cloth with some Chinese writing on it, just on the floor in front of a grave. Now, with a little bit of translation magic, I translated it to be this. This is not a crypt. Strange. Maybe there's some lore behind it, but I'm not really sure. Also, something that must be very connected to the Identity 5 lore is the other piece of text that's in Red Church, and that is a sign in the wedding section near one of the exit gates that reads, Welcome to the wedding of Barkis, Heart, Emily. Let's go over to one of my favorite maps as a survivor, Sacred Heart Hospital. Although Hospital is a very, very popular place for survivors to kite, and one of the strongest places to kite as a survivor, due to its two-story construction that makes it very difficult for hunters to catch survivors. If you pay close attention and you back up away from the church, you'll, ro you'll notice that the building actually has three floors. I wonder what could be up there. Maybe there's some lore to that as well. It seems to be a big attic or a big room. As you're making your way back into the hospital, if you look above the main entrance to the hospital building, you'll notice that there is a broken sign that says, Hospital, logically. Going past all the graffiti on the top floor in the center of the room, you'll notice that there is an operating table. Now, if you pay close attention to the operating table, you'll notice that there is a silhouette of a person on there that fades in and fades out from black to invisible. One more thing that's very interesting about this map that I think most people already know is the statue that watches you. Yes, if you get to a certain distance of the statue, the head will always follow you and will look at you wherever you're standing around it. Most people already know this, but I thought I would add it anyway. Ever Sleeping Town. It's a map that's becoming more popular now in the competitive scene than it used to be, since I think there have been some optimizations to it uh, as a map. And I would say that this map has the most amount of like features to it compared to all the other maps. It has lots of different details and texts and all these things all over the map that makes it very difficult for me to choose some more notable ones. The first thing that I think is very interesting is if you go to this area of the map and you look at the school, that I believe it is a school, you'll notice that there is a sign. Now, in 5v5, you can actually go out of this door and it's an exit gate, and there's some Chinese writing just above it. What does it say? Entry prohibited. Fair enough, it is a locked gate. Also, if you pay attention a little bit above that to the left, I believe, you'll see that there is a clock and it's stuck at 10 to 2. I would assume that since this building is a school, and I'm not sure how China works, but I believe that they probably finish their school at 2 o'clock, this could be something to do with the lore of the map. Other pieces of Chinese writing that you can find around the map are all over, and I could not translate all of them because it's not very clear to me what the symbols really look like, and I couldn't translate them, but I'll show them to you here anyway. Another strange feature to this map is if you go to the graveyard section of Ever Sleeping Town, you'll find one grave 
that has glowing green spirit lights going around it. I don't know again if this is something to do with the lore, but it's still very interesting and very notable. A hunter's favorite map. Now we've got Arms Factory. This map is called Arms Factory because it actually has a factory. And if you read the plaque that is outside of the main entrance to the factory, you'll notice it says Minerva and then the second word you can't read. Now I'll tell you what the second word is because inside we will find out what it is. It says Minerva Factory. Keep this information in your head because we're going to do some more about this in a minute. Now inside we can see lots of posters that have blueprints for bullets and I think some type of weapon. But in the corner of factory is where we find something very interesting. On the wall we see the words, I will find you. Now I believe this is connected to the lore with Gardner and Hellember, but if I'm wrong about this please write in the description if I'm wrong, I'm just assuming. Now why did I know that this factory set is called Minerva Factory? It's because just below the writing on the wall you'll find some bags, and if you read what it says on the bags, it says Minerva Factory. Now who is Minerva? If you look at the symbol that is there for the logo of this factory, you'll notice that it's a Roman style head. With the power of Google and knowledge of some mythology, we discover that Minerva is the ancient Roman mythological goddess of knowledge. And later on, she also becomes the Roman goddess of, who guesses it? War. So I think this symbol does make sense for the factory itself, being an arms factory. Another weird and interesting fact that you might not have known is that you can find lots of wheels dotted around the map. Yet, all the cars have a full set of wheels on them, so where did these wheels come from? The last map that we're doing today is Leo's Memory. There aren't too many things to note on this map, but there are a couple of things that might be interesting for you to know about. First of all, inside of the factory that is there, you'll find the exact same posters that we found in Arms Factory, the bullet and the weapon. Something that is interesting for hunter mains, if you have a hunter that has some type of vertical movement, for example evil reptilian, you can actually jump onto the second floor of the factory through a little opening. Oh, and around the map you'll find a lot of snowmen. Some of them are sad, because they have like a pole coming out of them, and some of them are very happy, so make sure you, you keep your eye out for that next time you look around the map. There are other maps that I have not talked about in this video, for example Moonlit River Park, Golden Caves, and White Sand Street Asylum, and other variants of the maps that we've done today, for example the Halloween maps. If you'd like to see another video where I discuss some of the weird things that are in these other maps, then please leave a like below and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos on Identity 5 and other gaming content. My videos range from beginner guides and a little bit of fun, to more in-depth guides and discussions. Now take care guys, have a lovely day, bye bye.